A few months ago, we made a video covering why you should study landscape architecture. And as a follow up to that, I got a bunch of requests asking to make a video about why you shouldn't study landscape architecture. So today we're making a video to discuss just that. So if you already were on the fence about pursuing a degree in the field or are just trying to get a better gauge for the pros and cons of this major, then this will be the perfect video for you. Now, before we get started, my name is Carter and here we help future designers with architectural representation, visualization, and education. So if you wanna learn more about it and how to improve as a designer, then consider subscribing. There's a lot of great things that are already going on in this channel and I have a ton planned for this upcoming year. So I'm really excited about it and I hope you guys will be along for the journey with me too. But anyways, let's talk about why you shouldn't study landscape architecture. Now this is kind of a tough video for me to make because I obviously loved my experience in landscape architecture and my studies, but there's definitely some things about the field that can be really tough and maybe some turnoffs for you guys. So to start, landscape architecture is intense. The amount of work you're gonna produce over a four year span is honestly mind boggling and you're really not prepared for how much you're going to produce over that period. I remember walking in on my first day of class and looking around and everyone was happy, we were all chatting, and we were really excited for what this major had for us. To put some context on this story, we had classes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and our school started on Thursday, the week going into Labor Day weekend, which is a long weekend for us in the States. So here we are, 40 some odd students on a Friday afternoon walking into class thinking it's gonna be the typical college experience where you read off the syllabus for 20 minutes, maybe talk a little bit about what you're gonna do in the class, and then you head on about your day and you start the actual next week. No, no, we were given an entire assignment that required us to do 35 different line drawings from biomorphic, geomorphic, rectilinear, and a bunch of different drawing styles that we had to produce by the next class. And then on top of that, we had to make cardboard cutouts that layered of all 35 options that we made. So talk about starting off landscape architecture on a bang. Say goodbye to our three day weekend. We all worked the entire weekend and barely finished by Wednesday to get all of this work done. And of course it didn't get much easier from there, but looking back that class in first studio was definitely a wee out studio for the people who really kind of weren't interested in that major. And boy, let me tell you, we lost about half the class after that very first studio. So I tell you this because you really need to know that this major requires a ton of your time and it requires some very intense segments of your life, especially up front because you're just not used to having to produce that much work and you haven't figured out the best way to produce work quickly yet either. So just know that you're gonna be spending more time in the studio than you ever thought was possible. You'll be spending a lot of weekends there, a lot of days, very long days, um, a lot of the time during your schooling. Now, another thing to be aware of is landscape architecture is actually really expensive. Buying materials, books, drawing equipment, drawing softwares and utensils, it all adds up really, really fast in that first year, first semester. Now, this is something I didn't consider at all when I went into the field and just didn't know how much things costed. You know, drawing utensils, paper, all those things, they really add up really fast. You have one Michael's trip and you're already at 100 bucks. So be prepared to drop a couple hundred bucks in your first couple semesters and it will, might continue on all the way through your schooling. But just know that once you have your basic setup, it's much less expensive than initially. Next, let's talk about the absolute brutal criticism you will endure in your professional career as well as in school. Design fields are tough. Everyone has their own perspective, their ideas, and what your whole design should be and what it should be all about. And if it's not what they had envisioned or think it should be, then they'll let you know. And it may be nice or it may be in a really hurtful and harmful way. So you'll need to be able to develop thick skin and learn to deal with criticism and take criticism with a grain of salt very early on, if not coming in. Because if not, they are going to eat you alive and you're going to hate yourself and you just 
you just don't want to do that. So if you do go this route, just know that every opinion is just an opinion. It may not mean that your drawing sucks, your plan sucks, whatever you did sucks or is bad or is wrong. It might just be a different perspective and it's just something you just have to be aware of. Next, let's talk about the level of collaboration you're going to need as a landscape architect. And yes, that means you are gonna have to do some group work. So I'll tell you right now, if you thought you were going to just design stuff in your free time and be on your own, boy, are you wrong. There's so much collaboration in this field. And if that's what you're looking to do, then do not become a landscape architect. This field is gonna have you collaborating with a lot of people over the course of your studies and your career. So you need to learn to be a good team player or you really will just hate it. And there's nothing else you can do about it. Because as much as landscape architecture is a design degree, it's also a very highly communicative degree and requires you to really think about how other people are experiencing things as well as talk to others to get some better gauges on what's going on in the world and in design. And just so you know, if you thought it was just in school and once you get out of school, to hell with that. No, you have to work with architects, developers, and engineers, which can honestly be way, 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 way worse than just dealing with your classmates who are all around the same age as you and are doing the same profession and field as you. Trust me on this one. And of course, if you didn't like talking to people already, just know that you're gonna have to deal and work with clients as well. So again, if you wanna communicate with no one, work a simple life behind a desk, landscape architecture is not gonna be the profession and job for you. Next, let's talk about the absolute trash wages and the absolute trash treatment you will get as an entry level employee starting out. Unfortunately, like many other design fields out there, you are going to have to pay your dues and thus it's going to lead you to some really poor benefits, poor pay and poor outcomes in the first year, two or even three years. Since design fields play such a heavy emphasis on real world experience, you're going to be kind of kicked to the can the first couple years and it really kind of takes a toll and sucks after you just came out of school and you really just want to get out there and work, make some money, work on some real designs, and you're just kicked over to the CAD bin over there and you sit there for a year. Now, I'm not saying that's what you're going to do the rest of your career, or it might not even be what you do in your first year. It all depends on your situation and where you end up going to. But just be aware that if you came into this major thinking you were going to make 80 to 100 K, in your first year or two out of this profession, um, you'll be sadly mistaken, unfortunately. And of course, money isn't everything, but you should know because college is very expensive and you really just wanna be making sure you're making the best and smartest decision for you so that when you graduate, you're not only happy, but you end up making the right wage for you. Next, let's talk about the hustle culture that exists in design fields. Hustle culture in design fields is very, very real. And that's because the more work you put in, the better the outcome will be. Now this hustle culture can lead to some really fantastic and awesome projects, but can also lead you to have a really terrible work-life balance and leave you feeling burnt out in the first year to three years. Comparatively, I don't think it's nearly as bad as the architecture field, or at least that's what I've heard from other architects because a lot of architects have actually switched to landscape architecture and I work with quite a few, so they've told me their disdain for the architecture field. But that said, it's a huge factor to consider because most jobs are salary based. So if you're working 50, 60, sometimes more hours a week, your salary and wage is gonna be even lower than it already was coming in as an entry level employee. And it's really just going to feel super draining and super unhelpful to your life. So if you do pursue this field, make sure you find the right job off the bat. And if it's not the right job, it doesn't work for you and you're not happy there, please, for the love of God, just leave and move somewhere else. You are not obligated. You don't owe them anything. Just move on, find something better or keep moving till you find the right job that fits the best for you and your needs. Lastly, let's talk about the long process that it can be to actually become a licensed landscape architect. 
On average, it's gonna take you four to five years to get a degree in the field. That degree needs to be accredited with the Land Arc program. And then you're gonna to need to study and work under a landscape architect or in an office for two to five years. And then once you're eligible, you're gonna to have to take a series of exams and study for those exams, which might take you another year or two till you're finally licensed. So this will of course cost you a little bit more money as you're taking the exams and buying books and stuff to practice and study for the exams. And then once you're actually licensed, you're gonna to have to pay to keep up that licensure. So that said, it might take you nine, 10 years from when you started as an undergrad before you're actually considered a licensed architect. Now, of course, you can do this way sooner and way faster. If you're really on top of it and on the ball, you can be licensed in six years from your undergrad experience. But yeah, those are some reasons why you should not study landscape architecture. Now, of course, if you really listen to the video, a lot of these reasons can be avoided and are very superficial and don't really have to apply to you if you don't let it happen to you. Landscape architecture can be a really fun experience and I've really enjoyed my experience. You just have to know what's ahead of you and be prepared and learn how to properly deal with it in your own way that works best for you. So if you wanna learn more or really don't believe me after watching this video, then I encourage you to watch my Why You Should Study Landscape Architecture video. I'll leave a link in the description for that video and also place it up in the tagline here for you guys to head on over to watch that. And of course, if you found this video useful and enjoyed the content, please drop a like. It helps push this content out to others. It helps the algorithm recognize who I am and helps put me out to a bigger audience. And also, if you guys didn't know, I'm doing a July architecture sketch challenge over on my Instagram. So if you wanna check that out, check me out at, at design it green over on my Instagram handle. But anyways, that's all for today. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Peace.